You are listening to the Contemplative Motherhood Podcast. My name is Chelsea. I'm a teacher, practitioner, spiritual director, and pilgrim. And I'm Erin, a creative, homeschool educator, counselor, and spiritual seeker. Listen in as we dive deeper into the contemplative lifestyle through hearing about each of our lives. You'll hear our triumphs, failures, practices, and mistakes as we journey together. You might even hear a kid or two in the background. So grab some coffee, tea, curl up, and take off your shoes. You are welcome here. Now let's get started. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Contemplative Motherhood Podcast. I am your co-host, Chelsea Whipple. And if you've listened to us before, it is usually Aaron Thomas, my co-host, introducing us. But today, it's just me here on the podcast. First time I've ever recorded by myself. So, of course, this episode is going to be a bit different than our usual ones. Now, we are about midway through our planned second season and have been enjoying so much exploring these Amas and how their life and experience shaped their relationship with the divine. And I feel the more I study and talk about these Amas, the more they're just penetrating my life and helping to go further in depth with my relationship to the ultimate reality. And I really hope and desire that they are starting to shape yours as well, to keep you know, you've been kind of dwelling on them a little bit longer, kind of holding space for them and seeing how they're co-creating in your relationship with the divine. So I'd like to begin this episode to let you all know what is currently happening in Aaron and I's life. So if you're watching this right when we release it, it's still relevant. If not, who knows what's happening, but, and I'm not going to try to speak for Erin too much since she's not here, but just going to kind of give you a general overview. So in the last episode of the Christian Desert Amas, Erin revealed that she broke her ankle while on vacation with her kids and her spouse. And after we recorded the episode, she found out it was more detailed than just a simple break. So she is currently at her house unable to climb stairs, trying to homeschool. She homeschools her two children and deal with other families' medical issues. So as you can imagine, her life has just really been flipped upside down. And this, you know, she's struggling, as you can imagine. Um, Any of us in that situation would be struggling quite a bit. And for me personally, I have had what feels like unplanned tasks that are just overwhelming me. They're taking all of my free time that I have. And what is funny is that I had dropped some of my responsibilities in order to prioritize creating free space and exploring what this free space will offer me. And the free space is offering what I did not expect. And I'm going to get into that in just a bit. And that'll be kind of shaped around this episode about, you know, learning from the Amas and recognizing the need for margins. Oh, I love that word. And we'll get into that. But first, I want everyone to know that if you're, you know, you follow us on social media, you're going to see this as well. But Erin and I decided to take about a four week mid season break. So we are not done with season two. We're going to take about a four week break and then finish this season by releasing an episode every two weeks instead of weekly. And I am going to be so honest and vulnerable and. I'm sure I've said this before, vulnerability is a little bit difficult for me, but it's important. Um, And this was so hard to accept to take a mid-season break, honestly. You know, we really live in kind of a producing culture. And I'm a perfectionist. And so, you know, my perfectionist attitude in me wanted to complete the season, regardless if it broke Aaron and I's back, you know, figuratively, since we are dealing with a break here. Uh, broken bow. <laughs> but, you know, and it sounds so ridiculous to say, but 
I have to admit, like, the idea of professionalism can sometimes overwhelm me and expectations. You know, I live in the cycle of accomplishments and expectations, and that's really my ego that kind of runs that ship. And I'm so glad that, you know, being a contemplative and and practicing, you know, these spiritual practices, I am so much more aware of when my ego is controlling me and able to kind of take a step back and look at it and say, what's really important here? And instead of kind of, quote unquote, lying my way through what's really important, I'm much more satisfied and comfortable with taking, you know, what can seem like the hard route, um, which sometimes goes against our society. And, you know, sometimes this, my ego can just scream at me, expectations, expectations, expectations. You need to produce, you need to be accomplished, you need to do all these things. And I have changed so much in the last three years that it's just like a little bit laughable. But, you know, what's more important is my sanity and the health of myself. And that's for everyone. You know, the most important thing in our life is our emotional, our physical, in our spiritual health, you know, and taking a step back and asking what is needed here? You know, do I need to keep going, going, going? What is important? So, you know, when Aaron and I set out and, you know, I'll write the episodes and we'll kind of talk, discuss the episode, you know, we go through a, a big process to actually record one. And when we were preparing for more episodes, you know, after, after she had her fall, It just became obvious that season two was not going to happen in this nice, needy, tidy box that her and I planned it to be, Um, which actually is such a great learning moment when you recognize the need for this. And as a morning person, you know, I woke up one morning feeling really uncomfortable pushing Aaron to produce, you know, and it was like this you know, suddenly these amas intervened in my life once more. They're so present on my brain right now. And, you know, I could sense all of them, even the ones that we haven't recorded, but just staring at me, you know, wondering why I was not encompassing their teachings. I've been talking about them and they've been growing inside of me. And this was like another step to really take the next step to live out the principles and love that they're teaching. You know, and here they are so with their faithful nature towards the more, the magus, the more, and asking, you know, what, what is it all for? You know, why, why do I do these podcasts? You know, why are we recording? What, what benefit, what love are we trying to share with the world? You know, I was teaching about these amas in living in this worldly reality, you know, when I speak about going for the more of reality, you know, so it's like taking that next step, learning about these amas, and then actually living these amas. I'm going to take a quick drink here. <coughs> As you can notice, I have another cold. I feel like, I don't know if anybody else is in this realm of constant cold. So needless to say, it felt like an epiphany rise for me. And I want us to stay with that word epiphany. You know, I wanted to pause and see, you know, what is epiphany for you? And wondering if these amas could speak to me right now, what would they say? Yeah, I can almost picture them. Yeah, I don't know what they look like, most of them. But what would they say if they're like, Chelsea, you know, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what's going on in your life right now. You know, and recognize what is going on. Sit, give it space. You know, is this serving your purpose? And um, that was a great recognition. And I just love these women so much. You know, they continue over and over to surprise me. And let's get back to to this word margins. So I have this new word, 
margins. And it gets repeated in my head over and over. And it's very relevant to understanding the intersection between our lives in this podcast. And that's the margins. And you all can probably sense by now that we love introducing new words to describe being a contemplative. And here is that other one, margins. Now, when I say margins, it can mean something different to each person and how they understand this experience that I'm speaking about. So margins to me isn't just about like giving myself space or creating space. It kind of is. It incorporates it. But margins, I always think of as like kind of that canal where it's like allowing the unexpected to happen. So, you know, for a bit of background on how this word is shaping my life right now. So a few months back, I realized that I was in over my head in life. You know, my very first episode, I think I talked about doing. I'm really good at doing. And I desire to live a life of being. And what does that mean? And then realizing that doing and being are the same thing. You know, but I did too many things without being. You know, and, and the things that are in my life are very intentional most of the time. You know, we have life and life gives us tasks that are unplanned and just have to, you know, get done. Our routines that we can turn into rituals, all those kind of things. But the outside activities of of what I didn't have to do in a normal, just being, you know, a mother, a spouse, a partner, a employee, you know, those kind of things. So those extra things. And um, so those are intentional activities and they're really life-giving activities. But I was so overwhelmed and sometimes could be consumed by only them you know, a task that needed to get done. It's that perfectionist attitude that's just like going, going, going until, you know, sometimes I'm physically exhausted. And it was just too much. And I needed to let go, love the word let go of some things in order to live and let be. And I don't want to be too presumptuous. So I apologize if this is too presumptuous, but I'm wondering if, you know, if others can relate, you know, walking in kind of the religious defining life for for a while, the idea of letting go can be fearsome for some. And I know it is especially for me. And there's two reasons for me for this. You know, letting go always feels like failure. Like I couldn't handle it. I need to just push through it, even if it was breaking me. You know, I could weather the storm I can handle it, throw it at me. You know, I've got it all together. It's funny, but it's really what filters through my head. Always being competent, confident, you know. And, you know, the duck whole thing where be smooth on the surface and, you know, being the duck and underneath you're paddling like crazy. Like to me is a terrible metaphor and imagery for me anymore. It used to work great. And now I'm like, why? Why? If I'm paddling so hard underneath, why can't I show that on the surface? And I understand that sometimes need to be smooth. So, you know, the all together, it's what filters through my head. And it's that darn ego. That darn ego that's always reliable and always self-assured. And the second reason why letting go is difficult is because I grew up with this repeated phrase in my head. To let go and let God. Well, (laughs) that's great. Um, And sometimes letting God would generally mean doing something that I did not want to do. So my initial instinct is to say, I'll let go, but I'm not so sure about this God thing. You know, and it's funny how life shapes us. And I'm not quite sure I really like that let go and let God but I understand it in a different way than I did before. And I think that's probably true for for some of us. So going back to these wonderful almas, you know, I have relearned the idea of let go and let God. And it's not so much about letting go, but about freeing myself. When I can focus on that freedom aspect, Letting go does not become so difficult. 
You know, when I finally freed myself of tasks that felt burdensome, it felt so free. And then, suddenly, that freedom did not exactly do what I thought. And this is the real lesson about these margins, about kind of creating that canal for the unexpected to happen. I wanted it, and I had no idea what it meant until it happened. So I desired for these margins to show up in the opening of time I had created with these tasks. But that unexpected was something else completely. So back to the initial topic, you know, about recognizing the need for margins. You know, I feel like the Amas could relate so much to these margins. Like they lived their life in these unexpected, uncertain ways. And they had complete freedom that that's what life offered them. Oh my gosh, I just love it. I love that that's how they lived and that's what they can show us for us. Now, although it always seems like the Amma's life um, was full of tasks and not like wonderings, you know, they didn't wander around the desert or, you know, Amma Miriam didn't wander around, you know, waiting for Moses to be picked up, she took action, right? And, you know, Amma Rabia, you know, didn't wander around waiting for God to intervene in her life. She went with God. She spent all her free time being, in, you know, intimate with God. And Amma Aya, you know, this practical way of looking, um, of being present in every task that she did and letting go constantly, constantly to feel that freedom of not holding on to anything. So, you know, their life full of tasks and not so much of the wonderings, you know, it's easy for these tasks that they taught to actually become the wonderings in themselves. Now, stay with me as I expand on these tasks. So I spoke about this very topic about, you know, needing to let go of some stuff and and wanting those margins with my spiritual director. And I love spiritual direction, as you guys can tell, Um, and being a spiritual director myself. And it's just a wonderful way to open yourself up that you didn't even realize. And she asked, you know, so I'm looking at her like, I finally let go of stuff and I did this. And why is my life still so full? And she brought me back to, you know, the idea of margins being unpredictable, of creating a space for unpredictability. And she asked if what I thought about creating free space to be present is actually what is happening, but just in an unpredicted way. You know, I have more freedom to maneuver and be present you know, then constantly be in a state of what do I have to do next? What do I have to do next? In a state of accomplishing things off my to-do list. And it's kind of where I was living. But it seems that right now this freedom that I've created for myself by dropping some of my responsibilities is con- being consumed by these unpredicted tasks. So my margin, my my space of unpredictability right now in my life that I am is opening up because of these amas, is finding ways to be present to this freedom of tasks. You know, I have no idea if this makes any sense to you. But I find myself more satisfied with the margins that are opening and in this constant state of letting go. I'm going to give one such example because it feels weird, you know, to constantly talk about yourself to yourself for everyone else to listen. But I have noticed lately when I'm doing these, some of them are kind of menial tasks. Again, they just have, are things that just need to get done. And, um, and they kind of can consume my mind. Well, when I'm doing them and they don't take a lot of brain power to think, and, and it's like, I find my wonderings to just be and be present to what I'm doing. And it's opening up this space of just then recollecting myself. It's like that, those turning um, routines into rituals. Um, Sometimes it's just being silent. You know, sometimes it's, it's, um, 
wonderings in my head. And sometimes it's speaking to the divine. Sometimes it's just being open to what I'm surrounded with. You know, what do I hear outside? And sometimes I'm in a state where it's just like, um, you're just there. No, no thoughts crossing my brain that I can recall, but I'm not, you know, fantasizing about being somewhere else. I'm just there. And that's very different from where I was. So to bring it back, you know, even recognizing the need for Aaron and I to take a breather, to focus on life as it is being presented instead of maneuvering it to where it need, we need it to be. You know, the freedom to know life is not to be controlled, but to simply live. So I'm going to say that again. The freedom to know life is not to be controlled, but to simply live. You know, as a mom and really as a human, (laughs) I know this and you know this, but sometimes it takes a smack in the face to understand it. Well, this is the smack in the face and it was the Amas that delivered it. You know, and they're very example of living life on the margins you know, constantly against standard society and allowing life to be lived instead of controlled. So as I wrap up this episode, you know, what, you know, I wonder what, what is the need for margins in your life? What's the need to creating that space of unpredictability? And it's probably already happening. You know, and just recognizing what is what was unpredicted, you know, unpredictable today that you found joy in or was upsetting. You know, where do you need space? Do you find yourself with eyes glazed over just trying to get through the day and get as much possible done that you don't even know what you did that day? You know, how can the Amas teach you to be present? You know, to find that space to breathe. Is there something you want or need to let go of? So my challenge for you and for the next month is this. Breathe. Just breathe. Simply breathe. Breathe as if it is the only thing that needs to be done that day. Whatever else gets done is great because you already accomplished what you needed to do that day. Breathe. 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 You know, notice how good it is to do that. When life gets to the point where it is too much, then again, breathe. 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 Enjoy this break. I know we will. And I know we'll be excited to get back at it. But for now, we are going to breathe. Just breathe. Until next time. Thank you again for joining us today on the Contemplative Motherhood Podcast with us, your host, Aaron Thomas and Chelsea Whipple. To get regular updates on our podcast, hear new episode drops, interact with us, and find our show notes, go to our website, www.contemplativemotherhood.org. There you can also sign up for our newsletter. As always, we appreciate your support of this podcast and in helping us share our journey with others. We invite you to regularly check our blog. Our after show blog posts will allow you to dive deeper on the content shared on an episode. So if you enjoyed today's podcast, make sure to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. This helps us to cross paths with other Pogo Mamas across the board. Until next time.